So then when we talk about inserting a trach, you can kind of see where that goes. So here's the epiglottis. So this is that structure that when you swallow, it's supposed to move down and cover the vocal cords mm -hmm. um, so that you can swallow your food in your mouth down your esophagus. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to protect the airway. Um, we also have the vocal cords here. So that's why if I took his cap off, his voice might be softer or non-existent because once I open the trach back up, the air wants to come in the trach and then also wants to go out the trach. It's like the first exit out. So by physics, it wants to get out. So a patient has to um, generate more force to kind of come up through the vocal cords to make their voice. So that's kind of the looking at why they would have weak voice. Now in his case, I believe he has vocal cord paralysis. Yeah. And I don't know if that's both or one side. One, one. Okay. So when you talk about paralysis, um, the vocal cord one either is just not moving. So it could be stuck in a closed position. It could be stuck open, but whatever side it is, if it's one or both, that cord is not moving appropriately. Um, and the other one may be. So then you have a case where if this doesn't protect the airway properly, you could end up getting fluid into the lungs because that cord isn't, they're supposed to come together and close when you swallow. Um, it's also why if you swallow the wrong pipe, you have that immediate cough, those vocal cords will like snap shut and then um, protect the airway while you're trying to cough stuff out. And so that's why it feels a little sore and wet is when those vocal cords get wet, they get angry. So if those are not moving and closing the way they should and opening for breathing, then you can run into problems. Mm -hmm. So not only would you not be able to protect your airway, but if you're voicing and we have this closed off, if for some reason those vocal cords end in a closing position, you can't exhale either. Oh, so that's okay. why I think right now they want to keep the trach. They want to see a probably how bad that is. So that's why they have an ENT oh. consult. He'll mm -hmm. actually go in. Um, he'd go in the office, they will numb his nose mm -hmm. and then they'll take like a camera and put it through like a very flexible one, but then they can visualize the vocal cords. They'll ask him I to say things work. so that they can watch him open and close. They'll look at those structures up there and see if there's any swelling. Yeah. I think he's also had some swelling and has been treated with steroids. So they'll go mm -hmm. in and look at that too. Um, and then they'll see like, is that a problem? And then they can actually go down further between the vocal cords and they could take his trach out and look to around there. So that's why we're kind of waiting for them to officially go in there and look because we can do a lot of guessing, but then we're just guessing. So if we pull that trach and it is something more serious, well, then we don't have an airway if he has issues. So that's kind of why we're hanging out caps. So you're capping around the clock, it sounds like, and that's going well. But at any point, depending on what's happening here, his airway could be closed or compromised and then we run into issues. His swallow also was not great. Um, so I think they're hoping that the swallow will improve. And then I think he has a GI consult as well to mm -hmm. look at like yeah. his GI tract and stuff. I know you have a lot of upper airway secretions too, or saliva and drooling. So I think that's also playing a part in the decision. When we tend to pool our drool here, or just create a lot more than normal, um, we do run the risk of like, accumulating secretions and then those sliding down and creating a pneumonia. Mm -hmm. So he has said that he thinks it's the collar. It sounds like he'd had mumps like three times as a child. So things tend to aggravate that. Mm -hmm. So maybe after the collar comes off, that would improve. Mm -hmm. I think he says he's got eight more weeks. Um, they could also look at, is there other treatment mm -hmm. options for these glands? But I think all of those things combined, they're not hundred percent confident that he could protect his airway. So that's kind of why we're hanging out like mm -hmm. this. Um, his airway is this six, uh, Shiley uh, Proximal, it's an XLT. So it is a little bit bigger than the standard trach. Um, and since the way they do Proximal, it sounds like with his swelling. Typically the uh, trachs are kind of in, they're rather small and skinny. But when you talk about an airway that has swollen, we put bigger trachs in to kind of mm -hmm. keep that airway open. So we can use as much of it as possible with this. So his trach is a little bit, um, bigger it also extends back a little bit that's where the proximal comes there's a little bit more to the um trach up top to kind of push through any swelling that there was so he has kind of this kind of trach we call him a dual cannula because there's the outer cannula that we think of as a traditional trach and then there's an inner cannula um, so this gets thrown away every day and we put a new one in with trach care 
this kind of saves us also so if he is coughing up some thicker stuff um, and he needs to get it out but it's not quite clearing here we can just change out his inner cannula without having to do a full trach change so that's kind of the benefit of this all adult trachs have this in place towards the end we'll talk about bagging um, the only catch with this style is if you needed to use the ambu bag, which is usually, it's up there. You can kind of see that mask is attached. Mm -hmm. If you had to bag to his trach, you do need this in place um, because the bag will attach to the trach, but it can't attach without the inner cannula. That white piece is like the universal adapter. Okay. But we talk more about that towards the end. The last piece to this trach that you only see when we're putting a new one in is called the obturator, or I call it a guide. So if we had to change his trach, 